Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360. Welcome to another 360 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm looking at the Elementor add-on pack, Unlimited Elements. This is a unique add-on because it comes with a widget creator. That's right, you can create widgets to use in the Elementor editor. I'm redoing a site that was previously built with Beaver Builder and Toolset. The decision this time is to go with Elementor and advance custom fields. So there are some challenges, mainly that I need to show some custom fields only under certain conditions. These are the conditions. Sometimes there are products that have a current sale. When that's the case, I want to show a banner with information about the sale. But when there's no active sale, I don't want to show anything. Since there are a number of products, I need to use an Elementor template and dynamic data. It's not practical to manually edit every page when a sale starts and when it ends. Those are my conditions, but you can see how this type of condition could be useful in other cases. For example, to show a birthday message on a membership site or different information before and after an event. Elementor Pro doesn't support conditional logic for showing widgets or fields, but there are several third-party add-ons that do. Unfortunately, Using as a condition to show or hide a widget between two dates or between two dynamic dates is not an option with any of them. I imagine that you've heard of the unlimited elements add-on pack that a lot of people are talking about. One unique feature is that you can use it to create your own element or widgets. This widget creator is a power tool. It's not something that just anybody would feel comfortable with. However, I have a hacker mentality in that I'm not afraid to go in and play around and experiment. And so I thought I'd see if I could create my own widget with a conditional logic and dynamic date functionality. To say I'm impressed with unlimited elements would be an understatement. In this tutorial, I want to show you the widget and how I created it. I created a test site using the Page Builder Framework theme and installed some plugins. I've got Advanced Custom Fields and Custom Post Type UI for creating the custom post type and custom fields, Elementor and Elementor Pro, and then the Unlimited Elements for Elementor Pro add-on. I created some products, and if we look at some of the individual records, we'll see that some of them have a promotional message and a start and end date for the promotion. Here's one in September, which is the month in which I'm recording this. Here's one that has a sale going for October. And here's one that has no promotional message or start and end date. In the Elementor settings, I checked that I want to use Elementor with products. And I disabled the default Elementor colors and fonts so that it would pick up the colors and fonts from the theme. I created a page called Great Mugs, and this just has the posts widget on it here. Nothing special, just using the cards layout, and this shows all the products. Now when someone clicks on one of the mugs, we go to see the product single. Here it is here in the theme builder. Let's go ahead and edit it with Elementor. Problem here is that we want to add in our banner with the sale information. So let's go look at the widget creator and create a banner. You find the unlimited elements add-ons here in the WordPress admin. You see there is a long list of categories, team members, food menus, and so on. And within each category, there are a number of different layouts and styles. The Unlimited Elements website says they have more than 800 widgets. You can see a lot of them are variations. So what I did starting out is I was looking for something that was similar to what I wanted to create. So I came in here and looked through the categories and found content boxes. And I looked for a simple content box which I could use as an example. Here's one called Simple Icon Box. None of these are installed by default. You bring them up in the interface here and you can preview them. And then if you like them, you can install them. You can see this one's pretty simple. 
If you wanted to, you can install it. So what I did is I looked through one of these first until I felt confident that yes, I could make some good progress with this. And then what I did is I created my own widget. So I went here and clicked add widget and gave it a title. Now you look here and there's this huge list and you don't see the widget you just created. But up here is an option to show only the ones that are installed. And when you do that, then you see the one you just created. When you hover it over it, you get this menu, you edit, you can preview, you can copy, and then there's some other options here. And this is where you would export one you created to use it on another site. I should say these widgets aren't standalone. You're going to need unlimited elements installed on whatever site you exported them to. So click on the edit widget and you come up in this widget creator dialog. This is the information we just provided and you see there are tabs across the top here. So I'm going to go through the ones that I used. This icon, this is what will show in the Elementor editor. So I'll choose the bullhorn and then yes, I want to use dynamic content. And then here you specify a demo post and this is useful later on in order to get a list of fields. I'll show you that in a minute, but let's pick one of the mugs that has an ongoing sale right now. And then we also want to use custom fields. We're not going to use the category and we don't need these items here. And this is for the preview in the widget interface over here that we just looked at. When I do these, I just kind of save as I go along after each tab. So attributes, these are the variables or options. Some of them show up here in the editor and other ones are show up in Elementor as items you can choose or fill in. So I want to add the three fields. To make it easy to remember, I'm just going to use the same names of the fields as on the products page. And you have an option here for a default, and so I'll give it a default. And one thing I should point out here is there are different types that you can choose. So I'm going with a default of text field, which is going to work in my case, but you could have a number, a true false, radio button, a text area checkbox, and so on. Color picker is nice if you want to let people choose the colors in Elementor, an icon picker, and so on. The post list and post terms would be used if you're creating something like a post grid. So I have my fields here and I'm going to update and go to the next tab. Item attributes, you would use these if you were doing something like a post grid. And in that case, you would have perhaps options or variables related to the widget itself overall, but also related to the individual posts inside the grid. Those posts inside the grid, those are the items. So we're not going to use that. Then you have the HTML tag where we can see our default message here. And I'm going to come back to this tab in a minute. But first, going to just do a quick overview of these because this is where I'm going to do all of my work here. But this one is where you could add some CSS that gets added in with the widget, some JavaScript, and then these are for includes. And you can see these are libraries that are already included either with WordPress or with unlimited elements. And so here you could queue up some files here. And this is where Unlimited Elements stores the assets for the widgets you build in your WP Contents folder in the uploads. And then these are assets if you wanted to, for example, have some images for as the default that you show. So anyway, I'm coming back here to the HTML part. To the right here, this is your list of variables that you can use, some default ones. And then here you see the three I created, the promotional message, promotion start, promotion end. And because we put in a preview or demo post, we have a list of fields from that post. 
And so that's useful when you're using dynamic data. So I know I want to create just a single line banner with an icon on the left and the promotional message on the right. In the tutorial videos on the Unlimited Elements website, they get the code online from CodePen. But if you want to create your own, you're going to need to know some HTML and CSS and maybe some JavaScript, depending on what you want to do. So I just wrote that up. You know, I kind of figured that out and I'm just going to paste it in here now. I'm going to update it, save it. I'm going to use the same bullhorn icon kind of to announce that there's a sale. And then here's the promotional message field that I created. I think right now we have a widget. Let's go try it out in Elementor and see what we've got. So let's go to Templates, Theme Builder, Product, Single, Edit with Elementor. And we're back here. Let's go down. And here's our widget. Cool, huh? Let's drag that in. And this is our default message, Sale. So that's working and that's really nice. And look over here, we have our dynamic, we have our fields and we have our option to link it up with dynamic data. Now we haven't done anything with promotion start and promotion end yet, but we have added promotional message. So let's go ahead and hook that up. And here's our message for this single. It's working. Let's update that, save it. Let's go look at it on the front end. This is before we added the widget. And now here's our widget. This mug is on sale in September, so it's showing correctly. But if we go to this mug, which doesn't go on sale until October, and remember the video is being recorded in September, we get the October sale message. So that's wrong. That's not what we want. So we need to add now our conditional logic. So I'm going to go back to the widget builder. And now I'm going to add the conditions. So in the unlimited elements help docs, they mention the twig conditionals. So I went and looked at the twig help and you can see that they have documentation for if, if else, and so on. And I need to compare dates. So I Googled that. Twig is very popular among developers and there's a lot of documentation and articles and whatnot online. And I found this article that told how to compare dates with Twig. They also showed how to use the now operator for today's date. And that's how I put this together. One thing is you'll notice normally when you add a variable, you get these double curly braces but in here they don't have them and that's because it's already within a twig code block so anyway what this says is if the promotion start date is less than or equal to today and the promotion end date is greater than or equal to today then show this html so let's save that and let's go back into the theme builder and wire up our date custom fields. Get the end date here. Save it. Let's go check our pages. Here's the one that is on sale and that's still working. And here's the one for October, which isn't on sale yet. And the message doesn't show. So that's working correctly now. When you're programming, it's a good idea to test out all the conditions. So we've looked at one where there is a sale now. We've looked at one where there is a sale in the future. But let's look at one now that doesn't have any promotional information. Let's see here. I think this is one. Yeah, so there's no promotion, no promotion start or end. Let's go take a look at it. And drats, it has an empty banner. I guess since the dates are all blank, they match. 
So let's fix that. Let's go back to the widget builder. and add one more condition. This also in the unlimited elements help docs mentioned that you could test if a field was empty. So I have here if it's if promotion start time is not empty, then drop down and continue. So let's see if that fixes this problem. And it does. So that's great. I think we've got our widget now that's working and we're done. Showing a banner between two dynamic dates is an advanced use case. I'm really happy to see that Unlimited Elements Pro is able to handle it. Their docs on conditional logic are a little thin, but fortunately they're using Twig for templating and for the variable placement, and Twig is very popular. There are lots of resources available online. This was my first introduction to Twig, but I'm already a fan. As I mentioned earlier in the tutorial, a good way to learn is to look at examples. I'd like to see some widgets added that use more advanced use cases, such as ones that use exclusions in the post listing query, or something that uses advanced custom field relationship fields. Now that I've created my first widget, I've had lots of ideas for more. I imagine that you would have the same experience. Unlimited Elements is a very unique Elementor add-on that empowers users to use their creativity to solve their building needs. The widget creator is very nice. I hope that you found this overview of it and this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching.